I'm going to create a site plan. Now at the moment I've got these two imported files, or these two imported bitmaps. They're uh, just a scan from all the only information I could find. I'm going to get rid of that and that. So that's my, this is going to become my existing and this is going to become my proposed. And you can see what I've done here is I've actually drawn uh, rectangles and polygons on these so that I can put notes on them. But this object here, this is a polygon that I've traced over. I want this to actually become a property line. So I'm going to use a tool in Vectorworks to convert this into a property line. Now I could leave it there and trace over. Vectorworks, we've got our site modeling tool set. We've got a property line object here. This is my property line. And I could trace over it. So here we have the defined property line. So what I'd like to use, let's go back to that, the preferences here. The preferences for this particular tool, I want to use a simple dialog box with bearing and distance. And if I click, it'll bring up my create property line with the azimuth. So the easiest way to create this from my polygon is to go up to AEC on the menu bar. We're going to choose create objects from shapes. I've got a shape. We're going to delete the source. Only this time we want this to be a property line. So I'm going to hit the letter P, jumps down to there, and property line is the one I want. So we're going to create a property line. We're going to delete the source shapes. And now it's created a property line for me. Now it's on the none class, and I nearly always put this on a class that allows me to control the settings. So I usually have one called site and one called boundary. Click on that. Now that's disappeared because if we come down to here. This is my navigation palette. I'll just bring that up and I'm looking at my classes and I'm looking for site. That's services, plants. Let's just type up here site. So that should make it easier for me. Site boundary. So let's turn that back on and you can see there's my boundary object. If I move it out of the way, there isn't another one there. It's the only one I've got. And that's on the class site boundary. Now over here on my attributes palette, we really need to control this. What what are our options? What about make uh, make all attributes by class? And now you can see it's made all the attributes by class. There they are there. So if I just drag this out of the way, you can see it. It's a dashed line. It's on a particular style. It's got a particular color. And I'll just put that back. Some of these objects here, some of this annotation, you may not want some of this annotation, so you can hide some of these objects. You can also click on this blue dot here and move that along the boundary to put it in a better position. Uh, we can also start to, uh, let's see, fill behind text. That's turned off. Let's turn that back on. And if we set this back to a solid color, solid white, you can see what's happened now. Everything's solid, and I've also got solid behind my text. Unfortunately, um, I really need to see through it because I need to see the existing house. So we've got the settings here. So I'm going to hide that one as well. Hide. And if we want to, we could move this out of the way over here. Move this down as well. And move this one up so it's there. So that's my proposed house. Now at the moment it's just text. What I do need to do is to color this in and actually locate a copy or a viewport would be the great answer. And there's a couple of ways to get our house onto our site. One of the ways we could go to our model layer and we could our wall layer and we could draw a polygon over it and we could copy that polygon and stick it here. But that's actually not really effective. The really effective way is to create a viewport that links your house plan to this particular layer. So let's go up to view on the menu bar and we'll choose create viewport. So I'm going to put this on my site plan layer. I could put it on a sheet layer, but I'm going to put it on this. This is a design layer. What layers do we want? I want this, these two here. Uh, this is 37B, the walls and the roof. OK, what classes do we want to see? Now, they're all turned on at the moment, and we're going to have to turn some of these off. But at the moment, I just don't know. So we'll just leave those on. In fact, it might be easier if we start with the roof not turned on, and we'll turn the roof on later when we need it. OK, so click OK, and there's our house there. So this house actually locates here. Now, because this is a bitmap, I can't actually snap to it. So I'm going to hold down the B key so I can drag the copy. That has to go up to here and just zoom in. That wall goes, it's my B key, so it goes there. And I'm going to rotate this. So this is a viewport, but I can rotate a viewport. 
I'm going to use the first mode, so rotate from there to there. This is going to line up with this part of the site here. So there it is there. So that's my proposed building on my site. You can see I've got a few things that I don't want to see, but there's a tool in Vectorworks that does allow me to hide objects that I don't want to see. It's called the Visibility Tool, and it looks like that, that one there. Only available if you've got uh, Vectorworks Architect, Landmark, Designer, that kind of thing. So let's have a look. Can I find that? So that's Demolished Walls. That's visible at the moment. So I've got this option to turn off classes. Uh, here we're going to make them invisible. So we go click and it's hidden those particular things. What's this one here? Uh, this is floor structure. Let's get rid of that. Uh, we've got some other bits here. We've got structural beam. We don't want to see that. I don't want to see my fixtures, but maybe I do because this is a site plan. Maybe I'd like to see some. Let's get rid of the furniture. Uh, the roof structure. Let's get rid of my pergola. Can we get rid of my... Uh, that's the nun class. That's not going to help. Uh, that's on the nun class as well. So we'll just leave those the way they are. So there I have my building is now linked to my site plan. Uh, visibility tool. That's gone. That one's... So this... Uh, let's get rid of... These are all in the nun class, which is really difficult. So if I turn that off, a whole lot of stuff will disappear. Let me try it. No, that's not what I wanted. Foundation walls, that's what I wanted. Now let's bring back the none class. So let's go back to that. Click on classes. We're going to look for none. We'll turn that back on. And preview is really handy because preview allows you to see everything back again. And I've got my section indicators here. I don't really want to see those. So I'll have to go and assign those to a class which is not none, which would be handy. My hot water cylinder's there. My washing machine's there. So I can now see the outline of my building. If we go back to walls, we're going to find some of these objects here, like this one here and this one. These should really be on a class that makes it easier for me. So if I got a notes class, it doesn't look like I have, so I'm going to create a new class, call it notes, dash, section lines. Okay, so I can now hide those in the file. Uh, this is joinery kitchen. This is joinery kitchen. What's this one here? This is services fixtures. That group is none. And that one is... So I really need something like appliances or put this on a class that has to do with electrical. So first of all, let's have a search and see if we've got any classes for appliances. No, nope, no appliances. Fixtures. We've got services fixtures and plumbing fixtures. So that's on kitchen joinery. I might just put these on kitchen joinery. I'll probably want to turn them off at the same time. Kitchen. So right click and we're going to assign to selection. So that's an easy way to assign those. No, we don't want to use the graphic attributes. Yes, for the group, let's do all of that. If we go back to our site plan, now an easier way to go back to your site plan, which wasn't available in the older movie, is this key here, M key. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to close that. Right click, close that one as well. Leaves me these two. And what do I want to do? I want this to be mod walls. That's cool. And this one, right click, don't use the same visibilities. So this one, I'm going to go back to my site plan. So now what I've got is I've got my site plan here and I've got my floor plan that I'm working on here. So I can play with objects in this particular view and make them turn on or off, which should help this one. Let's go to classes and we were looking for kitchen. Kitchen joinery, let's turn that off, preview it. Yeah, that's much cleaner. That's my plumbing, that's good, we'll leave that on. That's plumbing, we'll leave all that on. Sweet, so now how do we set this up for a drawing? So hit the M key again, put that back. So I need to set up a sheet layer. Let's have a look for sheet layers. I don't have any, so I'm going to create one, a new sheet layer. So this is 001 and it's my site plan. Okay, so I've got my site plan. I've got my piece of paper set up. Let's go back to my site. This is this one here. Let's remember, it's a design layer. What we're going to do, we're going to create a viewport. I don't like that pattern, but it won't matter anyway. View and create viewport. 
So I'm going to create a viewport. This one's going to be called my site plan view. It's going to go on my site plan sheet layer, which is there. And I'm going to create a label and its drawing title is going to be existing site plan. Well, as we want to see just the one. Now we might have to play with the classes, but we'll see. Um, and let's click OK. So there it is there. The scale's a bit weird. It's 1 to 250. So this is my existing site plan. I'm going to drag a copy of that across here. And that one is going to be proposed site plan. So I've now got those two parts. Let's exit my viewport. And I need a title block. So I'm going to find my title block. Title block border. Double click to place it. What style do I want to use? Because there are some styles available and you can choose the one that you really like to use. If you've got one in your library and your favorites, you can use that. I don't think I've got any in this particular file. So I'm going to use a standard title block, one of these, and I'll just scale it to suit. Let's select that. And I'm going to convert it to unstyled. OK. And I've lost that one that I wanted. So let's replace that with that one. OK. Let's select it. OK. So there's my title block. It's not what I want at the moment. I'm going to convert to unstyled. So that way I can make all the changes here. My scale box factor 0.7. So there it is there. It's that big. And I also want to look at my title block border settings. Now I tend not to have a border going around. So I'll put the offset at one millimeter or about 25th of an inch. I'm going to hide the border. Uh, I also need to go to my zones here and my crop marks are none and OK. So that puts my border right there down here in the bottom corner. Um, 0.6. There it is. So this is my title block and I can fill in the data here. But you notice it's picked up the um, it's picked up the site plan from my sheet layer settings and it's picked up that. Not bad. Not bad. And this is this is not exactly the way that I wanted it to appear. You'll notice that there are some things here that I didn't want to see. So we'll have to go back to our classes here and we'll have to change some of these. Now furniture we wanted to hide. Preview. We want to hide some of the structural components. If I had any plants, I'm going to use my shift click. Now let's preview that. Okay, that didn't take anything away that I wanted. Uh, classes, joinery, kitchen we had kitchen so we didn't want the kitchen joinery the structural things let's uh, use structural so we wanted uh, beams above to be hidden we wanted the floor structure hidden uh, footings foundation wall roof structure and let's see what that looks like preview it it's looking a little bit better there's some foundation walls here so let's look up walls Wall. Wall. So we got wall cladding, wall demolish, we'll hide that, wall existing, external veneer, uh, leave external, we don't want foundation walls. Let's preview that again. Much cleaner. And this is a storage cupboard through here. Okay, so we've now got the setting that we want. Now the only thing I am going to need is a building and a site. One thing we do need is our site coverage. I'm going to go back to my design layer for that. What's it? It's this one here. Sheet site plan, it's actually called that one there. So we're back at that one. So this is a worksheet. Double click on it. It actually opens as a worksheet. I can scroll with my mouse to make that slightly larger. And what we really want to do is we want to find the building area. Now the building doesn't have an area. There's no polygon here that actually defines the area. So I am going to trace over it so that I've got a, a polygon. Depends on, on what you need to, to specify. For example, this is the gross floor area. So I need to click on the outside of the building. And it needs to include my roof over my veranda. So that's my area there. 
so I could leave that solid like that we could also play with the opacity and we can make it like that and we could put an arrow from there so we could use an arrow or we could use the call out so let's select all that copy it and I'm gonna use my call out and call out with three points and click here there and there paste my text in okay proposed house and that wants to be solid so I'll get rid of that text so I've now got an arrow for my proposed this object here is a polygon and I can name this polygon I could call this polygon house for example and this object here should be my property line and I'm going to name that down the bottom here site so how do I get VectorX to look for these objects here I can put an equal sign this will make this a formula and I'm going to insert a function and there are loads of functions I'm looking for a function that might do areas so I'm going to type area and there's one there so there's an area now it needs a criteria so I'm going to insert a criteria now insert criteria custom and here where it's got layer I want to choose name uh, name is and if you've lost what you've called it you can click on that button you can scroll down so this is my building we're looking for house okay okay and only one object was found let's click on the green tick now it's found this is in in square millimeters so divided by 10 little hat to six now that means 10 to the power of six or or a million if you prefer okay now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy that so copy paste and change this to site Now don't get little don't get rid of the little quote marks they're really important site now I need to calculate one divided by the other so this is an equals again and it's that divided by that equals now I've actually formatted this as a percentage format cells um, and this is decimal so I want this to be a percentage there it is I don't need that trailer anymore VectorX will put that in for me and now I've got the correct amount 34% 34.4% which is really quite cool I've got that I've got my site let's look at my actual drawing that one there and there's my site plan on my piece of paper it's not the only way to draw a site plan but I think it gives you a good idea of how you get the site how you do the property line and how you can make sure that you've got a copy of your floor plan completely up to date so if you don't believe me let's try the M key again so here's my this is my drawing that I'm going to print from my site plan drawing this is my design layer with my walls on it so let's just move that wall up there and you'll notice it's moved here straight away so this movie is a replacement of an old podcast that I made it's now 13 years old people complained about the quality of the video I've now updated it I'll put a link from the old one to this one and I'll also link this one to the old one if you like these movies it would be really good if you gave me a subscribe also don't forget to hit the notifications so that you see the movies when I update them thanks for watching